Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the French Watch Collector. Today on the bench we have a Rolex that I received in a post, you can see in a, in a little bag. And uh, you will see this watch has a lot of issues. Uh, so another faulty Rolex that need to be resolved on this, uh, on this channel. So stay tuned and you will see what's wrong with this watch and see if we can, uh, if we can fix it. It's a lovely day just, you see with a champagne dial and uh, a gold bezel and a gold crown. And you see now I'm winding the watch and nothing is happening. Nothing at all is happening. You see I'm tapping the watch, see if it's going to start. No, doesn't want to, you see the second hand doesn't move. Um, we checking the rest. So we have the quick side date. Yeah, that's turning. So that's good. Uh, let's check if we can change the time. Yeah, that's uh, looking good as well. The case is not in, uh, in bad shape. It doesn't look too rough. Uh, so there is definitely something wrong inside the movement. Let's check if the date is jumping at midnight. Yeah, perfect. Date is jumping, so that's good as well. Just gonna screw around the crown and uh, gonna figure out what's wrong with this watch and see if we can uh, fix it. But first we need to open it. With a special tip there and we need a special tool to open our Rolex case back. And I have this beautiful custom tool from uh, Eurotech to open uh, case back. There we go. Now it's fully unscrewed and just can check what we have inside and see if there is anything obvious when we open. Well, the movement looks quite nice actually. You can see there, checking if there is any play in the rotor there, the balance moving, it's the balance staff is not broken. Checking if the winding, you see the caliber 3135 from Rolex, obviously. Yeah, it looks good. Everything is rotating as it should. There is no much play at all, actually, um, in the rotor there, in the weight, in the oscillating weight. So I guess we'll have to, yeah, so the watch doesn't wind. So most of the time this issue is coming from the mainspring. Uh, the mainspring can be broken, but we'll have to check if there is anything else. You see, first I need to screw like this, two screws on the side, which is keeping the case the caliber three inside the case. I'm gonna remove the crown and the winding stem there. Just gonna make it slightly rotate. You see where we have these two here on the side there of the case, align it, yeah. And now we should be able to lift up the case. Perfect. Beautiful dial actually. I love the dials from Rolex. When you remove actually, like, I'm very fortunate to remove the crystal and see them from very close. And um, yeah, they are so nice to finish, like even nicer than under, under the crystal. So you see, I put a, a cover there just to make sure it doesn't get scratched when I remove the hand with my Presto tool. Perfect, then I remove now. Just gonna store them in this box. We could put the dial a bit later on. First, I need to release the two dial feet screw here. And I can take now this beautiful champagne dial with my carbon twi twi tweezers just to make sure I don't scratch anything. Just sliding underneath. And lifting it up very gently until the dial feet come off the entire way from the caliber. Perfect. And we put it in this little box. just to keep it safe, like obviously we'll be uh, compressed and centered and it will not move. Just gonna remove now the date wheel here and look at this caliber, look at the amount of jewels that there is already on this caliber. It's unbelievable just for like a date, like there is at least like four jewels for the date to rotate. That's unbelievable, yeah. And this plate is very thick and very heavy as well. You can feel like it's solid, yeah? Like, uh, yeah, this obviously it's a, a Rolex feel. Like when you work on uh, on Rolex calibers, you you see actually like, yeah, they, they are built quite tough, yeah? They they are very, very strong. And you see that it's little jewels underneath there for the calendar wheel as well. Try to grab right now on this yoke. That's the mechanism just to do the quick Date change. 
And now I start to disassemble like a uh, few parts from the calendar mechanism. Because actually what I want is I want to get access to the cannon pinion. That's what I like to do. I like to disassemble everything to get access to the cannon pinion. So I can remove it. We're going to have removing the cannon pinion with a Presto tool. Perfect. Okay, so when it's done now, I can move to the balance side and I will remove first the winding mechanism, like the automatic winding mechanism. We'll uh, disassemble that later. See if there is any power, but obviously you see the watch was not winding. So yeah, just to be safe, like just to check that there is no power, but yeah, it was nothing left in the watch. Moving the jewel there from the balance. See, we get clean bit later on in a, in a machine. And we carry on to disassemble all the parts because yeah, the purpose of the maintenance or the service is to disassemble everything. We're gonna clean all the parts. That's why we want to disassemble them. Uh, check obviously if all the parts are in the correct states. And uh, we're gonna put the caliber back together. Oil it, clear, uh, being fully clean obviously, just to make sure there is no friction between the parts. And uh, yeah, it should run if you find the issue with this watch because you remember this watch is not working. Uh, it was not working, so yeah, we need to find what has caused this issue. Removing the clip there with a little spring underneath. I love like this ratchet wheel from, from Rolex, like this golden type of finish on top of it. And again, you see the jewels underneath, jewels with the barrel arbor, jewels everywhere. And that's what makes these calibers and this movement from Rolex are so solid. Like, yeah, even if you see this one is, yeah, it's broken, but can be as well due to uh, the wrong utilization. But yeah, nothing, nothing we should be able to fix, I hope. Yeah. Oh, the jewel just jumped there. Where did he go? That's so small, this uh, cap jewel there. Ah, it's just underneath there, here in a uh, movement order. Just removing now the train of wheel bridge. No decoration underneath, you see. Even if the decoration is pretty simple on a Rolex caliber, but yeah, they, they looks nice. Uh, I enjoy working on, on Rolex calibers. Obviously, uh, I enjoy working on other caliber, like for example, like Geiger, which are most of the time very nice and very nicely decorated. Uh, but I really like working on uh, on Rolex. You know that they are solid calibers, and uh, yeah, you you don't find too many issues with this caliber. You don't need to be uh, uh, extra careful with parts. The parts are very solid. We have a. Yeah, we go a couple of wheels there. Setting lever spring. And we have only the last bit here. We are disassembling the last uh, few parts for the keyless work. With the yoke spring here, which is actually, uh, we remove the yoke first because it went just over the spring. So it makes the spring easier to take out. And the last few parts on the on the plate here, we still have the winding crown there, the winding wheel. Yeah. And the clutch, perfect. Taking out the last few jewels from the balance and the escape wheel. Again, just to make sure that we'll get clean. Like uh, if they are clean separately and not on the, on the movement, obviously it would be easier to remove any dried up oil or grease on this uh, jewel there. So that's why we disassemble them before cleaning. Taking all the jewels, removing again, like uh, if there is any dried up oil or grease, it will make it easier when we put it in a cleaning machine just to make sure like everything goes away. Make it slightly loose. Putting back the balance and now we're going to focus on a couple of... Uh, Sub assembly. So first, the winding mechanism for the automatic system. Automatic winding. 
again, like you see, like all the jewels, like even on this wheel, this big wheel, massive jewel actually, couple of reversing wheel. And that's it, we have all the parts. Very simple, very efficient. Lot of jewels again. And we have this small bridge there with the crown wheel underneath. We just uh, disassemble again to make sure everything get clean. Oh, it just dropped in the hole there. Here we go. And the barrel, like that's the moment of truth. Let's see what we find because so far we didn't find any issue with the mechanism. Uh, so let's see what we have inside. Oh yeah, it's broken, yeah. That was, you see like the spring, it's attached, a part is attached to the barrel arbor and the rest obviously is not connected anymore. So the watch couldn't wind anymore because the spring is uh, is broken. So that's why it was not working. I'm just taking out there the barrel arbor obviously from the piece of the broken main spring. Clean all of that, obviously we'll have to put a brand new main spring in the watch when we reassemble it. And uh, so far, that's the only issue I saw on the watch. And after we see when we put it back together, uh, if the watch want to run. Uh, but first we need to put, like I said, all the parts that we did assemble in these baskets. You see that's a lot of parts. And uh, they will go inside the cleaning machine to be fully clean. Okay, so the cleaning is done in several steps. First, we go through a cleaning solution and two steps in a rinsing. And the last one will be a drying phase where we dry up the parts and all the parts will be ready to go back and uh, be reassembled and oiled properly. And I would like to use this opportunity to tell you that I have a Patreon page and I would like to thank Matt, Christian, David, Shelby, Jan, Christian, Cornet, Alan, David, Ted, Tony, Michael, Steven, John, Tim and Gregory. They are my patrons supporting me. So if you want to go there, there is a link down below in the description of this video where you can find the link of my Patreon page. You can go there and support the channel, support me, and it will help me to put uh, better content and keep me motivated. So thank you in advance, guys. If you like uh, my video, you can as well click on the thumbs up and uh, click on the subscribe button. And on the bell icon, you will get a reminder. Again, that would be very lovely if you can subscribe to the channel because I try to put a video once a week and uh, I would like you to, to find the video each time I put one online. Okay, so now we're gonna focus on the case. Gonna remove the bezel and I'm using this tool that I just to press and go underneath the bezel just to lift it up. There we go, perfect. Just gonna finish opening it with, uh, with a blade here. We should be, should get out the crystal, should get out of the way. Perfect. Very simple. Very simple case again. And now we're gonna start the reassembly. First, we're gonna reassemble the barrel, uh, barrel assembly, putting some graphite grease on the side and a new mainspring, obviously, you remember the other one was broken. So we put a, a brand new one. You see there, I'm gonna press on the edges and the mainspring will go inside the barrel, there we go, perfect. Putting the barrel arbor. And the lid on top. And I'm gonna use this tool here just to close the assembly. Oiling, I will uh, always oil now. I like to do it after being assembled, so like that I know the oil go in the right position. And I have all these parts that need to be treated in Epilam. So obviously I'm following the rules from, uh, I have uh, all the books from Rolex that tell you when you do a service, uh, what need to be treated in Epilam, which oil you need to use, where, and which order you need to assemble or disassemble. And uh, they, they say to treat all these parts in Epilam uh, so in, on top of what I do normally, I do the reversing wheel and the second wheel as well. To the pallet fork, uh, the escape and all the cap jewels, that's what I do normally in a treat in Epilam. I'm gonna dry them now. And here to all the jewels, I'm just trying a new method. I'm gonna, you see, put a chaton back on top and I'm just gonna use the automatic oiler, oiler with some uh, 9010 inside 
just to put a, a drop of oil inside there, right in the center, obviously. And I can place it back on the balance. Closing the spring on top. Beautiful. Look at how beautiful is a finish, like a brush finish. Same thing on the other side of the balance. Closing the spring. Gonna check if the balance is moving and the air spring is moving freely. Yeah, that looks good. Very concentric. You see the space between each uh, like uh, ring is uh, the same. I'm just gonna replicate as well the cap jewel where we have the escape wheel. It's true, it's very tiny and very tricky to put it in place in, in place, sorry, for the escape. <laughs> it doesn't wanna wanna go away. Huh? There you go, that's it, now it's in position. You can close the spring. Very tricky spring to close as well under the camera. And again, I'm gonna use the automatic oiler just to oil. Perfect. Other bridge with a part underneath uh, where we put a crown wheel there. See, putting some uh, 9104 here with an automatic oiler again. Just putting the screw here and that's it. Like that I know like everything is assembled. Can now focus on the, on the main part of the reassembly which is on the, on the main plate here. They advise to start as reassembly with uh, the keyless work, so that's what I do. I follow the, the instruction from, uh, from Rolex. For, for the assembly. So putting the winding pinion and the clutch here. We see it's very handy to find, to have like uh, on a lot of other caliber as well. If you were like, for example, from Omega or Psycho, you will find a lot of information online, uh, a lot of uh, uh, technical documentation that tell you how to disassemble, how to reassemble, where to put the oil, which type of oil you need to put or grease. Uh, that's very handy information. And obviously I have a book from Rolex that I managed to get, which is very rare, very difficult to get, where I have all this information inside. And you see the caliber, that was not that dirty, but uh, looks quite good, looks quite clean. 3135, which is a great caliber from Rolex. Uh, they made it for many, many, many years. And actually it's funny with Rolex because you see 3135, uh, it's actually the, the, the caliber that you find in uh, Datejust, obviously, like this one. Uh, but that's the one that you find as well in uh, Submariners. It's exactly the same. Uh, obviously there is a price difference between uh, Datejust and a Submariner, uh, but the caliber is the same, obviously the case uh, the dial is uh, is different. One is uh, rated obviously for for diving, and it can go quite deep. Uh, different crystal, different ceiling, uh, but the caliber is the same. And the uh, thirty one thirty five is actually the base caliber for all the GMT caliber, like you can find on a GMT Master Two, for example, on a Rolex Explorer. Um, it's all the same, and I think that's why it's strong about Rolex. They make great calibers, but as well, they are very, uh, I think, in terms of, uh, uh, if you want finance, they are very, very sharp because, yeah, they don't make tons of different calibers. They make one with subtle changes uh, and it will equip more or less the entire line, obviously, except the Daytona, uh, which is a bit more complicated. Um, uh, or uh, now that you have the, the Sky Dweller, which is obviously a different uh, caliber, but uh, yeah, except few, few, few exception. So we like 75, 80 percent of the watch will have the same caliber or the same base caliber inside, um, and they will change it maybe like every five, ten years. They will change the the, the caliber, but yeah, for this period of time, they always produce more or less the same caliber, uh, which is yeah, in terms of manufacturing, uh, very easy and very great. Uh, because you obviously you set up your machine and you set up everything to do the same thing all the time. If I compare to other company like GGR is very famous for that. They will have hundreds and hundreds of different calibers, like even on vintage watches. 
even vintage Rolex, you, you look on Rolex, they don't have that many calibers, like uh, uh, obviously the 3035 before this one, uh, and like few more before, but like not a lot compared to other brands. Obviously they bring like, for example, this one, like uh, some new changes compared to the 3035. Uh, some uh, improvements, but like, yeah, it doesn't change massively as well. Uh, and yeah, that's the strength of Rolex. Move the movements are so solid, and obviously, again, the quality control. If you have, if you produce the same all the time, the same caliber, you will be able to have a better quality control. That if you change the setup of your machine to produce like different caliber uh, every day, yeah, that's uh, that's uh, that's yeah, that's very smart. I found. Uh, but yeah, what's less nice is that actually in a, in a, in a submariner, you will find same caliber than a, on a day just, but yeah, maybe for like double the price or almost double the price, which is not really correct to me, but uh, yeah, that's, uh, and actually when you think about it, the day just is quite a good value for money because yeah, the calibers are very, very nice, very solid. And, uh, yeah, obviously they are a lot cheaper than uh, than a submariner, so yeah, depend what you need after. Okay, so now progressing quite nicely along, now putting the pallet fork and the pallet fork bridge on top of it. Need to make sure I line you see in this jewel there. I'm just gonna make it move. Up oh, there we go. Just sit down there. Putting a few screws. Gonna oil now all the juice just to make sure they run smoothly and the uh, friction is reduced to a minimum. And go ahead now I'm putting like the wheel that are gonna make the connection between the crown wheel underneath to the ratchet wheel. So we have this part like that will uh, move left and right to connect to the ratchet wheel when you wind the watch. Click spring here. So I'm gonna put the spring first. Gonna put some 9104 here just to make sure I lubricate the post where the click is gonna rotate around. And now we're gonna put this beautiful ratchet wheel. Yeah, and the click slap, yeah, something wrong. You see the click is not clicking there. Uh, might have done it the wrong way around, so we'll have to check. First, I'm gonna put a screw here and uh, keep the ratchet wheel in position. Huge screw on a, on a ratchet wheel. And yeah, I'm just gonna change. Uh, yeah, you see I'm gonna put the, the spring on the other side. If you want to go in a in a groove there, just gonna put it on the other side, and basically I'm gonna put the click on the left side of the spring and not the right side like I did first. Putting back the screw, and we see when we wind the watch, if the click is doing its job. Yeah, much better. Yeah, that's nice. I will give it a good wind. Putting some power inside the main spring there. You remember where the main spring was broken. And yeah, you see the pallet is clicking left and right. So the power is coming to the pallet fork. That's good. Gonna oil the jewels on the dial side now. Same thing as we done on the other side. And I can put this beautiful balance. I love the bridge. Like this bridge that go from one side to the other. Gently turning it to bring it in position. But I don't want to impulse jewels underneath like uh, to jump over the pallet fork. Yeah. Well, yes, it's running, perfect. You remember, that's always nice when you have a broken watch and uh, you manage to make it uh, alive again. It's always a, a tense moment to see if there is anything wrong on a watch. But I guess, yeah, the mainspring was uh, obviously not helping at all. Um, but let's check. Okay, we're gonna carry on the assembly and we see at the end which type of result we are getting on the watch, if it's running properly, if we need to adjust all the things. 
uh, now I'm assembling the calendar mechanism. Gonna put the yoke here. You remember with the jewels on top of it again, something very Rolex again there with these jewels to make sure that like the jumping of the date is uh, certain and there is no wear. Let's say put a, a jewel here. Quite tricky to put as well because you see, up. Oh, I need to hold the spring and that's it, it's in position. I'm uh, putting back like a rest couple of wheels from the calendar mechanism. Secure the calendar wheel with the screw, putting the hour wheel. And this intermediate wheel that connect the hour wheel to the calendar wheel to make sure the calendar is moving at the same rate of you see the hour. And now I put this massive plate on top and you cannot feel on the video the weight, but this is very, very solid. Yeah, it feels so heavy, this plate. And again, a Rolex as well is quite heavy and the movement, the caliber is for something. Like the caliber is very thick. I mean, like the metal, sorry, is not that thick, not that high, but the metal is so solid, like, uh, and uh, yeah, it's, it's heavier than uh, most caliber, I would say. And yeah, it gives the feel to the watch, like uh, feel like it's solid as well, because often when you have something which is heavy, you are, like you feel like, oh yeah, that's a solid piece of metal, because a watch, yeah, most of the time it's a piece of uh, of metal, so yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it feels solid. Putting the calendar wheel in position, Closing this little uh, screw there on top just to make sure the calendar will stay where it needs to stay. And checking, yeah, the quick side date and see if the date is jumping now. Yeah, that looks good. Putting the dial in position. Screen in position and just checking again. Quick side date. Yeah, good. Changing. Well, we see the, the, the jump, that's what's nice. Is that what this jewel is doing in the spring? You're allowed to do this sudden jump, like you don't see the, the, the change coming. So that's why I put the hour hand on top. You see now it's not fully installed, but just put it on top and go very gently. Yeah, that's where the jump is. So now I can align it precis precisely to midnight. That's how I like to do it. There we go. And now I press it in position. I will make it rotate again and see if it jump close to midnight. Yeah, perfect. Gonna install the minute hand. Same thing, we're gonna align it at midnight. Be very gentle there. And press it in position. And let's check which type of, uh, if we are getting a change at midnight or close to midnight. Yeah, perfect. Like almost bang on on midnight. I like to have it plus minus five minutes around, but that was almost perfect. Putting the second end, pressing it in position. And yeah, we have a movement running with a beautiful Sweep second hand, just checking nothing is touching. Yeah, that looks good. Perfect. Okay, so now we're gonna assemble the automatic winding system. Oiling the pause there. Putting this wheel, like need to go, like, here we go, on a post here. And you use this C-clip, you see there, up it come and make the weight obviously will uh, stay in position so very recognizable red reversing wheel from rolex and i put this bridge on top again with all these jewels just need to make sure everything is aligned we go very gentle there Perfect. Gonna secure it with th three screws on his uh, on his bridge.
and again gonna oil all the jewels obviously on uh, on both sides and we'll have the yeah the sub assembly done and ready to be installed on the watch first we're gonna clean the case in ultrasonic I will put down below a, a link with uh, my, the ultrasonic machine I use and a discount code as well if you want to buy uh, the same ultrasonic machine which is working great for watchmaking. It will be down below in the description of the video. Okay, I'm uh, reinstalling the crystal and you see I put the crown there with the winding stem. That will help me to align the cyclop. So I will align it. You see now it's not align very well but I will finish to align it and when it's done I put the bezel and uh, I will use this custom tool as well from Eurotech just to press down the bezel using a special insert for, for bezel not to get damaged press it in position there we go and now we have the crystal nicely in place we're gonna change all the o-ring and the seals on the, on the watch so the one inside the tube, now the one inside the crown, which is most of the time the one which is very dry and very hard to remove and uh, yeah, most of the time need to be uh, to be replaced and there was a case in this in this one. And here we have the new O-rings, you see for the case, the tube and the crown. Gonna put some molecode grease on all of the three of them. And they will be ready to go back in the watch. That's the one for the crown. We did the one from the tube. And the last one is for the case back. Just make sure the back of the watch is fully sealed. Okay, so now I'm putting the caliber back in the watch. I'm gonna unscrew, that's what we do on a Rolex to make sure the caliber stay. Unscrew the two screws that keep the caliber in the case. First I put the crown and now, here we go, I'm just gonna unscrew the first one and the second one. And that's it, the caliber is fully fixed, will not moved. Remove the power, I like to remove the power to install the automatic system and that's what's recommended as well by uh, the Rolex service guide. Perfect, it's in position. Put the two screws. Okay, I'm just now gonna adjust the watch. So first I will adjust the bit error. I just need to unscrew the screw which is on top. And you see there what we want. We want to have the two lines. Oh, I go in the wrong direction there. I want to have the two lines that go close to each other and makes one line. There we go, that's it. Now manage to adjust it. It's adjusted perfectly. So the bit error is good. Now I need to adjust the rate because he was gaining seven seconds a day. So for this, you use a special tool and uh, you screw, unscrew what we call a micro stellar adjustment, which are these little screws on a balance wheel there. So you are always like two of them. So you have two big one and two small one. Now I'm adjusting a big one. You see, that's a small one here. And I need to adjust the second one exactly the same amount. I need to turn it exactly the same amount. And that's why you have a special tool that helps you to do that. And we see if I manage to get it close to zero at the end, uh, which type of result we are getting on the watch. Gonna close the watch, close the case back. Now it's uh, adjusted. Put it back on my custom tool from Eurotech. I will put a link down below in the description as well if you want to buy one of these tools. They are fantastic tools to open uh, and close watches. If you want to inspect your watch, that's a very nice tool to have. Demagnetize the watch. 
and we see the results. But first, I would like to tell you that I have my own website where uh, you can find some uh, history and uh, a bit more about myself. You can find as well some of the watch that I restored on the channel and uh, which are for sales uh, uh, on my website. And as well, like on a Rolex that I'm doing right now, some people send me the watch for, for service and you see this one was broken so I can service or, or repair your watch. So you find the link down below in the description on my website. And here is the result. You see the amplitude went back up to 280. Uh, the rate actually when it settled down now you will see it's around plus one second a day. Uh, so that's perfect. The beat error is yeah, just around 0, 0 0.1. Uh, that's a very, very nice amplitude and a very nice rate. Very happy with the result on his watch, on a time grapher. And you remember for a non-working watch and look at this beautiful day just. I hope the owner will be very proud of this watch and will wear it a lot. So thanks a lot for watching and I see you next time. Bye bye. Thank you.